Hello, team. Captain Widmark here. Welcome to the task force. Operation Winter's End starts now, with you. Together, we will knock Eddie Winter off his throne and dump his sorry ass in a 2,000-volt easy chair. It should come as a surprise to no one that our operations in Boston have been, in a word, compromised. Winter has eyes everywhere, even the BPD. So, our brothers across the river in Cambridge have been kind enough to let us use the Cambridge Police Department as our base of operations. Let's get to work. Good hunting. Detective Valentine, Captain Widmark here. I'd just like to reiterate how excited we here at the Boston Police Department are that you'll be joining our investigation. Commissioner Turner has already regaled me with the tales of your adventures in Chicago. As you know, Edward L. Eddie Winter has been a pox on this beautiful city for nearly two decades. Extortion, murder, racketeering, kidnapping, name a crime he's committed. The epitome of a cold-blooded, brilliant, slippery crime boss. Fortunately for us, over the years, Winter has also developed that most self-destructive of character traits, uh, supreme arrogance. Starting a little over a year ago, Winter stopped coding his correspondences and began communicating entirely via unencrypted holotape. Each one addressed the subject in question and very clearly signed off by Winter himself. He's obviously mocking the authorities. He knows we're monitoring his communications. He doesn't care. Winter thinks he's untouchable. He's wrong. This is when the game changes. Those holotapes are the key to building a case against Eddie Winter, and they're what this task force will focus on. His crimes, his words, total self-incrimination. Get those holotapes, and we get Winter. Message to Alexander Strelnikov. My esteemed Mr. Strelnikov, I know someone of your profession values discretion above all else. But I have to honestly say, screw that. I mean, come on. One bullet halfway across town, and you blew Ron Trevio's head clean off. You, sir, are an artist. Are all the assassins from Russia as good as you? I seriously doubt it. But listen, your secret's safe with me. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Johnny Montrano. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. You fat, lazy piece of shit. I knew. I knew this arrangement was too good to be. Let's join forces with the North End, huh? Bury the hatchet? Work mutually against a common enemy? Well, you put the nail in that coffin, huh, boyo? What did you have to do, Johnny, huh? What was your job? Sit in your car, on the corner. Keep your eyes open. If you see a uniform, you get out. Walk down the street, knock on the door, and let the fellas know there's trouble coming. Easy as pie, right? I could have got a nine-year-old from the projects to do it, but no. In the interest of Irish-Italian relations, I give the job to you. So what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. You sit on your fat ass dribbling cannoli cream onto your third chin. You watch. You watch the uniform blow months of planning, all in two minutes. Congratulations, Johnny. You got me. You and your pal sure put the screws to old Eddie Winter. You should tell this funny story to your little girl when you tuck her in at night. In that corner bedroom, upstairs, pink wallpaper, little house on Prince Street. <laughs> yeah. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Robert Cooper. You did good, Bobby. The wife and girl won't be saying anything. <laughs> no worries. Hell, once those fat life insurance checks start rolling in, <laughs> Mrs. Montrano will wish a fat slob of a husband had eaten that bullet five years ago. As for what happens next, up to you. Beach, sub shop, car yard, doesn't matter where he ends up, I don't give a shit. 
I just want him in the ground. So, long as Johnny Senior never finds out what happened to his little meatball, we're set. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Robert Cooper. Bobby, we discussed this. You hooking up with your stepsister is your own friggin' business. But you talk in your sleep. Look, maybe you babble about baseball or sing show tunes. Or could be you chat about those three bodies Colin O'Malley dumped in the sand trap of Arlington Greens. Do you want to take that chance? I know I don't. Sorry, Robert. The girls gotta go. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Claire Pazinski. Dinner tonight. Me, you, and Arthur Black. Reservations of uh, seven at the Cornerstone Grill. Don't worry. I'll make sure Arthur's on his best behavior. No stabbing the waiter for a fucked up drink order like what happened in Charlestown. Even though the prick deserved it. Love you. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Sal Bosconi. You and I clearly need to talk. About Danvers, about the Montrano mess, about everything. I think we'd both agree that our attempts to improve North-South relations have been a complete failure. Look, I take full responsibility for the behavior of my guys. I expect you to do the same for that moron Montrano. But what happened in Danvers? I hardly know what to say. Your people turned that theater into a slaughterhouse. Those people are dead on your orders, not mine. And for no conceivable reason I can see. So let's meet. Just the two of us. Talk it all out. You name the time and place. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Charlotte Wen. My dear Miss Wen, I hope you're well. After our little joint venture this past May, you should be. If memory serves correctly, that pallet of buff out earned you a small fortune and Wu Li eight years in the state correctional facility. So I got to thinking, why not do it again? We both love the same things, money and destroying people who get in our way. Together we'll outmaneuver them all. Boston will be ours for the taking. Let them play checkers. We'll play chess. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Buster Conley. Nice piece you did on the monorail construction project. Heaven's Highway, Devil's Doing, <laughs> cute. But I think you give organized crime too much credit. The various Boston families coming together to fund a public works project? Clearly you never sat down to dinner with these guys. They can barely agree on an appetizer. And ain't nobody jumping to pick up the check. The bosses had their hands in the honeypot, sure. But nowhere near the level you were suggesting. You did get one thing right, though. Safety Inspector Alice Lansky was killed. They'll never find her. Because there's nothing left. After he bashed her brains in with one of those giant wrenches, Vinny the Crackers Venucci dissolved her body in a barrel of hydrochloric acid. So write your follow-up. Then feel free to tell the cops the murder weapon is hanging on the wall in Venucci's garage. On 4 Charter Street. Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Rodrigo Palama. Okay, my friend. I thought about it and I've reached a decision on the Fallon's job. Your cut is exactly what you deserve. Zero dollars. Zilch. You heard me right. You get nothing. Yes, you cracked the safe. And yes, we got the diamonds. But you also tripped the alarm. Mackie got pinched, and that's entirely your fault. Now, when he gets out, Mackie's gonna want your head on the platter. I'm gonna give him your share instead. I see you're getting off easy. 
Eddie Winter, signing off. Message to Claire Pazinski. Time to start thinking about a vacation. How does six weeks in Ireland sound to you? Dublin, Galway Bay, Waterford. Maybe a week in that little bed and breakfast in Kilkenny. And don't worry, we don't have to take my cousin Stephen with us. Let him get out of the country on his own. I told him to threaten that cop. Not blast him in the face with a shotgun. He can rot in that abandoned fishery down in Union Wharf for all I care. Love you. Eddie Winter, signing off. Detective Valentine. Nick, listen, I'm sorry. You've got every right to be upset. You need to believe me when I tell you I had no idea. Operation Winter's End was my baby. I believed in it. I still believe in it. They kept us all in the dark, me included. I got briefed this afternoon. They laid it all out. The whole thing. We just deal with the DA, his agreement to bring down the other families. His idea to record the holotapes and incriminate all known associates. And them needing a legitimate op and a real task force to make it all look like Winter was the focus. It was the plan all along, Nick. There's nothing we can do. Winter was a stoolie for the feds. He reported directly to the BAD TFL, all on the books. For his cooperation, Winter will be granted total immunity. It's over. Effective immediately, Operation Winter's End is to cease all investigations and operations. The task force is hereby disbanded. We played our part, pal. Not the part we thought, but hey, it happens. Now we're just another box in the file room. Nick, listen to me. Everything that's happened, Winter, Jenny, it's more than any one man should have to handle. You need help. Boston PD has been working with the eggheads at CIT. Some new program they have to deal with trauma. Scanning brainwaves or some such. I'll get you the info. You're going. That's an order. Claire, it's me, Eddie. It's been too long, I know. But I'm okay. We're okay. I know it's weird, me disappearing just when the heat died down, but there's a reason. What we talked about, it's happening soon. Bombs, missiles, huh, I don't know what, but the end is coming. I can't even tell you how much I paid my cloak and dagger friend for this info. So I guess me building that shelter was a smart idea after all, huh? But look, baby, there is uh, one more thing. The reason I haven't been around for a while. You know those idiot brothers that wicked shipping? The ones smuggling the radioactive material? I put the screws to them. Got some of the stuff. I've been working with this doctor in East Boston. The guy's a fucking genius. Listen, I know it sounds crazy, but he had this theory. The right kind of radiation exposure at the right amounts, it can change human cells. Mutate them, baby. I could live forever. Yeah, I know. It could kill me. I'm willing to chance it, but I can't risk losing you. So I'm the guinea pig. And I've been getting treatments. But don't worry. I'm fine. More than fine. I feel great. Amazing, even. I think this crazy shit's really working. Eventually, this war will blow over. And when it does, I'm gonna walk out onto Boston and pick up where I left off. I'm gonna own the future. I'm assuming you'll be dead by then, of course. But let's not dwell on the negative. So look, you come to the sub shop tomorrow night. You and I will go into the shelter together. Seal it up and wait for the big kaboom. Just, uh, you might want to prepare yourself a little. Mentally and such, I look a little different now. But love is only skin deep, right? <laughs>